Now that you've got some of the vocabulary down, let's take a look at exactly how companies figure out how much to charge for goods and services. And the way to determine the price of a good is to create something called a supply and demand curve. And that's what we're going to take the next couple of days and work on. To do this, there's two things we've got to find out. We've got to first off look at the seller or the producer, look at what they're willing to sell their goods for, and second, we have to look at what the consumer, you guys who are going to buy goods, are willing to pay for it. It wouldn't do much good for a company to make a product that costs them $25 to make if no one would buy it for more than $15. We want to make sure all those things are in place before we go forward. So what we do is we do a little research. The first thing we do is we look at our company. In looking at our company, we say, all right, how much of our product would we be selling, willing to sell at a certain price? In this case, I made some numbers up and I said, uh, if the price was 100, we would be willing to sell 100% of our goods. If the price was 90, we'd be willing to sell 95% of our goods because we must think our product is pretty good. If the price were 80, we were willing to sell 80%. And it flows on down. You have all the numbers. So we've gathered our data. And then we want to go ahead and put that into a chart. Right? And the first chart we're going to make is the supply chart. How many goods will we have available? To do that, we go into old-fashioned graphing rules. We create a graph. that we can plot points on. Now, from these points, uh, you have two sides. The first side is called the price. However much things are going to cost, let me mark that on our chart. The bottom is the quantity. How many are we willing to sell? And in doing so, we take the points from our previous chart and we put them on the graph. Here you can see the price. Um, on the bottom down here would be the quantity. Let me go full screen to show it to you. You can see down here the quantity. In, P, in most charts you have P and Q. So we plot our points. And in plotting our points, we make it so that you can see where Each number met. This right here, 100, 100 would be way up here. 95, 90 would be here. Again, as a company, the higher the price, the more likely we are to sell it. We like we like to make money, so the higher the price, the better. So we would chart that, and that alone would be called our supply curve. Just like that. We're all set. That's only part of the equation, though. Now we're ready to go on to the next step. We've got to find out how much people are willing to pay for a good. So we, we'll spend lots of money. Companies spend a lot of money going out and gathering data to find out what are the people willing to pay. Are they going to like it? You look at the new products that come out. Anything new at all, what are people willing to pay for it? Do they, have we created the need to have that? So we go out, we, we do a test or two, we find out what people are willing to pay, and maybe we find out that with our good, $100, or $100 only 10% of the people are willing to, to spend. Again, we would sell them all for 100 because we think we're making a lot, but people aren't willing to buy for that. Uh, if the price were 90, 20% of the people were, 80, 30%, 70, 40% would buy, at 60, 55%, at 50, 60%, Again, the lower the price, the more people are willing to buy. Now we turn around, take that those exact same numbers. We are going to create another chart. And here we go, the demand chart. You can see here that we have um, this one, this chart goes down to the right. Again, showing that the higher the price, the less people will buy it. You know, at 100, only 10 will buy it, and working its way down. So here we now we have what is known as
the demand. The demand curve. Right? What we need to do now as a business is take those two charts, the supply curve and the demand curve, and we end up putting them together. And we'll have all of our data. And doing so, we get a big X. Now the question is, what does this tell us? It's nothing we don't already know. We know that the higher the price, the less the people want it. The lower the price, the less we want to sell it. We take those two charts and where they come together, this point right here becomes very important to us. That is the price that we can most likely sell our good at. That price is called the equilibrium. Equilibrium just is the term where the supply curve and the demand curve meet. That tells me right there, the very best price that I could charge for my good is about 62 or 63 dollars. That would be my equilibrium price. For that price, I should sell out of my goods. The number of people that were buying are equal to the number of people of products we're willing to sell. All right? Again, the key term here, equilibrium. You'll be working with that a lot in the next couple of days. Surplus now. The surplus is just an area. If we charge too high of a price, we'll be left over with a lot of goods. All right, so if we try and charge a price up here, this whole area up here will be known as surplus. These are the goods that we didn't sell because we charged too much. If we price our thingamajig at $1,000 and no one buys it, we'll be left with all sorts of thingamajigs. Again, the surplus is the higher part of the chart. It's the part that we don't sell because we price too low. Next up on our term is shortage. Shortage is if we sell our good at too low of a price. If we should have been selling our thingamajig at $250, but we only sold it for $100, we are going to sell out, and we won't have enough. So down here, we have shortage. So as you put together a whole supply-demand curve all together, here we have equilibrium. I'll mark that as an E. Up here we have surplus. Here we have shortage. And that puts together a whole supply and demand curve. Now what you'll be doing in class in the next few days is you'll be taking some data that we give you and you'll be creating a supply and demand curve to make sure you can interpret what these look like. All right, that's it for today. We'll be getting the supply and demand curve soon. Again, if you don't understand any of our points, please come back and double-check the video. Thank you all. Have a great day.